Hey guys, welcome to another video. So I asked on Instagram if I should share a library haul. I posted a picture on my stories sharing the fact that I took out over $1,000 in value of books. Once again, my library tallies this um, every visit and then every they do another tally for the year. So this was my first visit for the year. So my tally for this visit and for the year are the same. Um, so yes, it was an overwhelming yes. 100% of people voted yes for a library haul video. So here I am. Um, now I'm not going to be sharing $1,000 worth of books because I also get some books out for my kids in our homeschool as well. Um, and we did a ton of poetry books. I'm gonna share a haul on that next week on my homeschool channel. Um, but I'm gonna share all the books that I am interested in reading. And I, maybe this is, maybe this is a sign of 2022 Chantel um, is going to be organized. I mean, I am a fairly organized person in many ways, but I haven't really been on booktube that much. I have it separated here. I'm going to be doing um, thrillers, and then booktube made me request it, and then middle grade, then cult books. Excited about these. Then I've got Christian fiction, and there's a little bit of overlap. Some of these fit into different categories. And then I've got poetry. And my rehold request for rock, paper, scissors hasn't even come in yet. I was wanting to join Tia's book club. So I might try that one on Scribd. Unfortunately, they only have the audio book. And I don't really think I'm going to like thrillers on audio. But I'm going to give it a try and see from there, I think. I was really hoping it would come in. There are four available in my province, but for some reason, they're not shipping them to me. So yes, let's start with thrillers here. Um, I think maybe these were both 2021 on that list for, um, yeah, that's a 2021 release. The, the Goodreads Choice Awards, I was requesting all of them. Uh, no, this one is a 2020, so I don't know where I heard about that one. But the first one is Mary, whoa, I, guys, I can't pronounce like regular words, never mind last names. So this author, Local Woman Missing. Um, I heard about this one from the Goodreads Choice Awards, and then I just requested some that really sounded interesting. So this one has to do with a uh, disappearance of a, I think a woman, and then another woman and her six-year-old da daughter, and really close together. So I don't know, just local women missing. So that one sounded interesting. Then I also got The Wife Upstairs by Rachel Hawkins. I'm pretty sure she has a new release coming out this year that is like yellow, but kind of the same vibes on the cover. Right, this one is kind of like a, I think it's, it says it takes Jane Eyre and flips the script. So I don't know, I didn't really love Jane Eyre, so we'll see about this one. Now for my booktuber recommendations. Um, I got three different booktubers here. First one is from Little Prairie Library. This one is A Paris Year. This is, the subtitle is My Day-to-Day -day Adventures in the Most Romantic City in the World. And when she was talking about this, so it's pretty much her diary, journal, whatever from that time, but also her letters. Um, here's a postcard, pictures that she's taken, um, like art that she has done. Yeah, this sounds really cool. If I, oh, I should do this. I should go to England for a year and do this, except I can't draw. Those would just be stick people drawings. But I really love this idea. I would like to go to Paris someday, but it's not like, super high on the list, but if someone did this for England, I'd be 100% purchasing that. But this one sounded really cool. Then I think I heard about this one from uh, Books and Jams, uh, Krista. This one is The 100 Years of Lenny and Margot. So I think she got this in one of her Christmas gift exchange book um, unwrapping things. And this one is a younger and older person. So a 17 year old and a 83 year old woman. Uh, oh, the 83-year-old is a purple pajama-wearing fruitcake-eating rebel. But together their ages equal 100 years, and I think it's like a friendship between them. So that sounded interesting. That's very different than anything I have ever read. So I'm curious to start it. And then Lindsay, whose channel name I'm blanking on, is it Lindsay's Library? Um, she had just read the second book of this series, Class Mom. And it sounded interesting to me. It's about a woman who is your typical kindergarten class mom. She has two college-aged daughters by two different musicians and is her second time around the class mom block with five-year-old Max. And she's on the PTA and 
I don't know, just the way that um, Lindsay talked about it, it sounded interesting. She was talking about book two, but she also said she really enjoyed book one. So I thought I would give this one a try. That's the nice thing about the library. Just try the books. If you don't like them, you didn't really lose anything except a little bit of time. Now for my middle grade books, um, I think I've maybe requested both of these before. This one is Linda Sue Park, The One Thing You'd Save. I've heard quite a few people talk about this one. It's really short, like it's a hardcover. So like there's only that many actual pages in the book. It I think is about um, a teacher asked kids if their house was on fire, what would, other than your family and pets, what would be the one thing you would save? And um, these are the students' answers. So I don't know, is this like a true story? I, I think it might be true, but I can't actually tell here. Oh wait, and they're poems? Oh, okay, so it's probably not a true story. So these are poems that are from a traditional form of Korean poetry. Oh, okay, so this could also could have gone to my poetry pile. And then my other one is Eggie Morton, Mystery Queen, The Dead Man in the Garden. I started listening to this one on audio and I was really not liking the narrator. Um, I think I read the other ones physically, but I can't remember now. Uh, so I just decided I need to get the physical book out again because um, I did have, definitely did have it before and then decided to go audio and now I went back to the physical. Um, yeah, so I just want to finish it. I'm I think maybe like 25% into the audiobook, so I'll just pick up from there. This is like an Agatha Christie as a child solving mysteries and this is book three in the series which I've just been enjoying. Okay now we are on to the cult books and like one of them is really thick. Okay so I've got four cult books here. The first one is Leaving Fishers by Margaret Peterson Haddix. I know I need to prioritize this one because I have liked what I have read of Mar Margaret Peterson Haddix and this one is her plus cult. So it says Dory is unbearably lonely at her new high school until she meets Angela and her circle of friends and then she discovers they belong to a religious group, the Fishers of Men. And yeah, so I just know there's cult vibes. I really don't want to know too much. This is going to be a definite read. Then another cult one. Uh, this might be a new release. No, this is from 2019. This must be from a while ago when I was just requesting all the cult books. I went into my library website, did typed in one of the cult books I knew and then found like the subjects that that was under. So there was like cults. And so I just kind of requested the most popular ones there. So this is The Liar's Daughter. Piper was raised in a cult. She just doesn't know it. Yeah, that's interesting. Her name is Piper, or it's not. Father is a prophet, or he's not. The community will save her, or it won't. So I think maybe it's kind of like a, is this YA? I think it might be YA, kind of like a thriller and cult at the same time. Sounds really interesting. Cults, family life, mm, doesn't say YA. So I'm not sure about that part, but it sounds really interesting. Now this one, I didn't realize when I requested it, how large it is. This is Say Goodbye. It is huge, it's huge. It's over 600 pages. And this one says Eden faces a final reckoning when the cult's past victims hunt them down in this explosive high stakes thriller. Oh wait, this is in a series? This is from the Sacramento series from Karen Rose. So I might have to see if the other books are about the cult as well. This is a 2021 book. I might have got this one from the... I don't know if this one was Goodreads bestseller or um, best thriller or not. But yeah, I'll check out the series first and see if there's other ones I need to read first. And then the other one, this one could also fit in the next category. Um, I got the third book in the Colleen Coble series, Three Missing Days. So I just read One Little Lie back in December and really enjoyed it. So I requested book two, which hasn't come in yet, and then book three. So I'm going to read this one. Okay, of course my battery died. It wasn't paying attention. I was too absorbed in my cult books. Um, yeah, so I am going to read this one. It's just going to I have to wait for book two to come in. Okay, the second last section is Christian fiction. Um, one of these I remember requesting, two of them I do not. So the first one, I actually don't remember requesting this specific book, is Fragments of Light. But this is by Michelle Phoenix and she wrote The Space Between Words that I read, I think in November. And I was really impressed. I went into that book with low expectations 
and then I think I read it all in one evening. I read it really quickly anyway. So that one was historical fiction-esque. Um, it's like present day, but researching mysteries from the past. And so I think this one might be kind of the same. Um, an impossible decision in the chaos of D-Day. Ripples that cascade 75 years into the present and two lives transformed by the tenuous resolve to reach out of the darkness towards fragments of light. So yeah, I don't know anything really other than that. This isn't my normal kind of book, but because I liked the other one so much, I definitely want to try another one of her books. Okay, and then this one, uh, I don't, there's something on the back. Oh yeah, actually the back sounds interesting. Okay, this one is To Steal a Heart. Now, if you've been on my channel for any period of time, this is definitely not my typical cover. So after spending her childhood as a street thief, Gabriella thought she'd put her past behind her until a fellow resident at her boarding school is unjustly accused of theft. So I'm assuming this is going to be like historical cr Christian fiction with some kind of romance. Will I get to this one? I don't know. I'm kind of curious. This might be an interesting reading vlog to do if it ends up being really cheesy, but I might like it. I don't know. Should I read this? Somebody tell me. And then, oh, actually, Shalise just mentioned this author. Um, her channel is And Read Another Chapter. But it wasn't this book, but this is Hope Between the Pages by Pepper Basham. Oh, I'm so bad with names. Um, uncover the story behind the 100-year-old bookish love note. Okay, that sounds interesting. I wonder if someone... That one, that kind of just makes me think of, like, Kathleen Kelly. Did someone mention this on that video that I did? Um, it is a historical Christian fiction romance. Clara Backwell can't lose her family's one-year... 100-year-old bookshop. Oh, it's a bookshop. But with a deed missing, there's a chance her father's legacy could fall into the hands of her greedy uncle. Oh, and it's also in England. So, these two might make an interesting reading vlog together. Okay, and then my last section is my poetry section. Um, I got a poem for every night of the year. Edited by Ali, someone or other. I'm sorry that I'm so terrible with last names, names, reading in general. Um, so this is a collection, so it's got a poem for every single day. Today that I am filming this is February, or no, January 5th. Yep, that. Oh, this is a long poem, but it's by A.A. A. Milne. I'll try reading the first, like, paragraph stanza. Elizabeth Ann said to her nan, Please will you tell me how God began? Somebody must have made him. So, who could it be? Because I want to know. And nurse said, well, and Anne said, well, I know you know, I wish you'd tell. And nurse took pins from her mouth and said, now then, darling, it's time for bed. And the poem goes on for like the rest of the page and a little bit. Stopping by woods on a snowy evening was yesterday's and it's been snowy here. That one's a good one. I like that one. Um, yeah, I would like to buy more poetry books, so I've been requesting a bunch. This one looks pretty good. It's a good assortment. So we've got Ted Hughes, I've never heard of, G.K. Chesterton, um, Samuel Taylor Coleridge, Ezra Pound, E.E. E. Cummings, Philip Larkin, Robert Browning. So some people I've heard of, William Shakespeare, some people I haven't, Sir Walter Scott, Carol Ann Duffy, uh, Emily Dickinson. There's also a bunch that are like translated from different languages. Yeah. So there's some, like I've seen Emily Dickinson a few times, but then there's also quite a few new ones. Mary Had a Little Lamb is February 19th. So it's, it's an interesting assortment here. Little Red Riding Hood. Oh, if you want to read a funny poem, a poem I really like to read to my kids, I can't remember the author. I'll maybe put it on the screen, but it's called If Red Riding Hood Had a Dad. And it is hilarious. It's all about how he would have taught her the difference between a wolf and a grandma. And it cracks me up. Um, and then I've got another poetry collection here. This is Wendell Berry, New Collected Poems. I got this one because Amy mentioned some Wendell Berry poetry. Oh, I can't remember if she's reading some 
or if she told me one that's her favorite. I need to go back and look that up. Either way, this has... Oh, maybe someone actually mentioned it too because of... And I think it might have been Amy. It's like my size of poem. I like short lines, and I think he writes quite a bit about um, nature. We've got March snow, April woods morning. So, yeah, that looks good too. Okay, so there you have it. There is my fairly large book haul. I think this is the only library haul I'll share for January, but honestly, I go pretty much every two weeks, so there may be another one. Um, let me know what I should prioritize here. Some of them, like, this kind of stack. This one seems really short, and it's poetry, so it'd be fast. This one really intrigues me. This one really intrigues me. This one I really want to read. These ones I'm kind of like, might be kind of funny. These ones I think maybe I'll read like a couple poems a day or something for a bit. I don't know. Let me know what I should be reading here. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and I will see you soon.